Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a GameStar presentation. Tonight we are bringing you the first of the semi-finals of this Gold Coast online tournament. We covered the quarterfinals on Saturday and now we're going to see who's going to proceed to the grand final. My name is Coldblood and joining me in the studio it will be EJ. How are you? Dude, I am pumped man. It is Tuesday night. It is Gold Coast League of Legends. It is finals action. It couldn't get any better. All of Australia is pumped and ready for Tuesday night Gold Coast League of Legends semi-final action. All right, and it was even a reasonable time for you as well, being an hour behind the rest of us normal people. <laughs> when I'm at home, that helps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump straight into the champion select. On the left, we will have SKT John Patrol, who we did cover. I think I covered them by myself on the Saturday night before Crisis joined me. Uh, it might have been Sunday night I did that. Yeah, I think actually it was Sunday. And then on the right, we have Tang and Friends, who this is their first Gold Coast broadcast, but we've covered them many times as Maka and Friends on Man, the I used to love Tang as a kid. Yeah. Great drink. Oh, great drink, Tang. Well, yeah. Him and his friends are here. Yeah, they are. We're going to add some water, stir, and have a good time. <laughs> It reminds me, when I worked at a uh, petrol station, they had this drink from New Zealand. Oh, what was it called? Um, it was, It's apparently really famous there. Sheep's piss? <laughs> no. Um, as we go into the lobby, something's gone on. Um, oh, it was lemon and sarsaparilla or something? No, that's not it. Wow. That's a that's an interesting combination. Uh, no, I, it, it was something else. Um, it was lemon and something, and it was brown. And I never actually tasted it, but there was a fair few people buying it. Most of them Kiwis. <laughs> so P and N, P and L, dude. I think it was brownie tin. Anyway, I know the one you mean. <laughs> it rocked. Yeah. Never tasted the shit myself, but you know yeah, it same rocks. For me. If they want to sponsor us, we'll you know give us a carton of it. Then we'll say they're a good good soft drink. Outside of that, they, yeah, we'll know. have to have a taste test before we offer Get our stuff. sponsorship. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, so this will be our last uh, little broadcast event for 2013, EJ. I think we've Ooh. done pretty well. There you go. I think we've done awesome, dude. We were a bit bit slow in the first half of the year uh, due to um, some natural attrition causes and things. But uh, you yourself have led a fantastic uh, revival in the second half of the year. We've always stayed active on the land scene. People seem to forget that. There's a bit of a divergence between the land and the online community. Um, we rock lands all year round, so... If you go to the land scene, you'll see us there for sure. Yeah, and now and, uh, we're... Online-wise, we're back in the selection screen. They're going with the same bands, they said, dude. So that was a pre predetermined thing prior to coming back to the lobby. Yeah, that, that's important that they have the same bands as before as we didn't get all the way through the picks before. Mac are already making us wait with the disconnects. He is in New Zealand, as his name in, in, the, in the Twitch chat is Maka NZ. Uh, and we've actually got a lot of talking... I yeah. bet he was a regular customer at your service station, dude. <laughs> or if maybe he... he... Hey, Josh, bro. Got a canned drink for me? <laughs> okay. So, we are back into the champ select here. This is for determining the first of the grand final combatants in the online tournament. And we do have the same bands out. Poor Susan being... Uh, targeted out by Tang and friends, Eve and Fizz as well. So they're definitely uh, banning out the jungler. I believe Evelyn was played to great effect on Sunday night. I think it was uh, Danny the Yag who was the jungler and he did Lee Sin and it may have been Elise. He did a fantastic job so not surprising to see the Eve taken away. And for SKT1 themselves, Shen, Mundo, and Lee Sin banned out some very tanky heroes. It's interesting to see Dr. Mundo banned out. He has been very unpopular ever since uh, Season 3 started, which was quite a while ago now. Blade yeah. of the Ruined King and just the, the, the jungle becoming a lot harder to clear have uh, led to his downfall. But he is starting to be picked up a lot more and uh, he, ca he has a lot of damage output without building any damage items. So it can be very annoying as... The Karma will be picked up by SKT1 John Patrol. So semi-finals action, uh, Cold Blood for the Gold Coast League of Legends action here on GameStar, sponsored by Oz Gamers. Get all your gaming news over at ozgamers.com. Do yourselves a favour. Lots of competitions, prizes, etc., etc. Free if you're with Telstra. Um, who are they going to take on in the grand final, or is this the first team through to the grand final out of tonight's match? Yeah, this best of three will determine the first combatant, and the other ones will be uh, OG Kush, and I'm not sure who they're going against. We'll have to find out. That game will probably be tomorrow, 
We can see Morgana is going to be locked in by Tang and Friends. Actually, she's very unpopular as well. As uh, Renekton, of course, Mendrix loves playing him. He's one of our casters. He's just started casting for Gamestar. So, uh, as is tradition, we'll have to give him a lot of flack if he messes up. So, hopefully, he's got his big boy pants on. I hope so, dude. Or we'll have his brown underpants, uh, brown underpants after he listens to the cast back. <laughs> And Draven could indeed be locked in as well. It's an interesting choice against Caitlyn. Kate is one of the few AD carries Draven has trouble with just because he can't get up to her very much. Not sure if Morg will be going bot or mid. They could potentially leave the support until last. Zyra is a very popular support of Sunwa. And uh, she has the potential to lock up Kate enough for Draven to get up and start whacking her in the face. Olaf is going to be locked in. That was played very, very well in Macker and Friends' previous Cyber Gamer game. And Malphite... Yeah, no, we've done Macker and Friends before, haven't we, dude? I'm sure. Yes, we certainly have. Get some. So, get some Macker and Sons. Yeah, Tang, and friends. Tang and Friends are better, yeah. though. Those Macker and Sons, they don't know shit, dude, about League of Legends. These Tang and Friends guy, though, they know how to operate. <laughs> okay, and of course, Malphite will be the pickup for Steve the Yag. We can assume that's going top with uh, SKT trying to debate what they want to pick up. Diana would be very interesting against Morgana. Is uh, Amumu going to be locked in? I think that was played in the game that SKT1 were playing before this one to uh, warm up a bit. So, And I think they won that one, so they must be decent at Amumu. And will Diana be locked in for the mid? It will indeed, and that is a very interesting choice considering the Black Shield is there. But instantly, Riven gets locked in, so Morgana must be going bot. And it looks like Riven instantly going to counter out the Diana. I don't know who wins that one, honestly. I can see Diana having a very, very tough time before level 6. But after that, her burst gets significant, so... Whoa, things are going to be very tough for the Moon Lady on the left here, EJ. I don't know about that, dude. I'm just going to be watching uh, Dang the Yag as he amumus it up. As an Amumu fan myself, uh, we're going to get some jungle tips galore off uh, Danny tonight. Oh, you do enjoy yeah. the Amumu, don't you? Oh, totally, man. He bloody kicks ass. He is an incredibly strong champion if he can get past his fairly weak uh, early game. I think in one... Well, you jungle with him, dude. He's cool. Hmm. I th actually, you know what? I think it was Danny the Yag who was playing him, and then he played Lisa in the next game. And he just got so far ahead in the XP that he was two-shotting whichever squishy he jumped onto with the bandage toss. He was doing very well. So, we know that he is very skilled on the mummy, and we'll have to see how McNugget XD goes on... Skilled on the mummy, and he can play a Moomoo. He's, he's multitasking tonight. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have a look at what is going on here. Karma's going to be rocking the Ignite, as is Morgana. I'm wondering if Morgana is a counter pick to the Karma, as uh, I can definitely see the Black Shield being very handy against the soft crowd control that Karma brings to the table. And, of course, the Morgana will make it very easy for Olaf to be sick sticking next to his targets. Uh, Draven is very interesting as well to go against the Caitlyn. It's, it's going to be interesting at the bot lane, as I've said a couple times now. It's going to depend on which support manages to land the skill shot. Totally, dude. Couldn't agree more. Okay, so in the Twitch chat, guys, if you'd like to communicate with us, you're very welcome. Just make sure there's no spamming. We have a zero tolerance for the Donga spam. It is not constructive in the least. And getting excited to get into this, EJ. What have we got planned for next year? I know we're heading somewhere in January. Oh, we'll be at SGL, dude, covering the uh, Counter-Strike Go competition. So if you're at SGL in Sydney, come on down, say hello. Cold yeah. Blood will uh, sign your T-shirt for a dollar. Uh, I'm just going to be sitting around watching as I'm about as proficient in Counter-Strike Go as uh, anyone is at... Well, you, you won't be watching, dude. You'll be working your ass off producing each cast. Oh, there but, you go. Um... <laughs> Hopefully someone talks to me because I'm apparently not doing much talking into a microphone. Watching. God. <laughs> Oh, I'm not allowed to be lazy. You'll be the hardest worker of the bloody lot. Nah, dude's on the microphone. will have it easy. Okay, so Sexy the Yag's going to be bringing along the cleanse, which I guess is for the Morgana. Maybe he just likes the cleanse. Steve the Yag going teleport on the Malphite. Now, the the problem here, EJ, is the ta oh, SKT1 JP. They've got a lot of a press R comp going on. They've got the Unstoppable Force. They have the Curse of the Sad Mummy. But if the enemy team is spread out and gets the jump on them, 
there's not a lot they can do about it. It's going to be very tough for them to reposition as their their comp is based around getting the jump they want so Diana can get into the back line. Karma can speed everyone up. Malphite and Amumu locking everyone up. So it's going to come down to how Tang and friends maneuver in these fights to not get locked up in the Amumu Malphite ults together. Dude, they'll have some Tang and they'll be orangey goodness and they'll be right. Oh, we'll have to see. Oh, they do go. Mendrix will be against Malphite at the top. I believe we've seen Mendrix go against Malphite on Renekton once before, and it ended up being a farm lane with the the rest of the lanes losing quite badly. So we'll have to see if Mendrix can dominate this time. There is no uh, Ignite or What anything. was Renendrix feeding last time, was he? No, he, he went even. When, sure. Which is, is not the best when you're a lane bully. <laughs> when Malphite has such a strong late game and, and Renekton falls off so hard, he needs to make an impact early on. They see Mandrix join a pun, pub game and everyone else just goes, Oh no, feeder. Oh, God help us. Mandrix, <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, here we go, dude. Game on. Yep, waiting for the skin battle to begin. We'll have to analyse uh, who has the stronger level one. In the preseason, we've seen a lot of uh, teams opt to not go for early aggression. But um, in in this tournament, we've seen a lot of early game plays. It's, it's been difficult for the enemy to deal with and if you see Maka is on plat that is because he reached platinum after the tournament started and got the at. go ahead from the organizer so he okay. he is valid for this tournament even uh, though he's in platinum at the moment gold coast league of legends ladies and gentlemen your world champion bronze silver and gold players plus Maka, <laughs> who uh is, yeah, he, he belongs in the tournament. Mac is that plus now. one tacked onto a wedding invitation, dude. He's just, it's Mac. He's plus one. Yeah, well, it's interesting, actually, that Tang and Friends, they've gone a little bit different to what they normally do. I believe it's McNugget XD, who's normally the AD carry. I am Woodsy, who's normally mid, and Mac, who's normally jungle. They've actually switched that around. So I'll have to see how they do in their new roles. They're definitely going to be taking away the skin battle with the legendary Borolaf skin. Showing contempt for their opposition, dude. They're mixing it up in the semi-finals. That's how confident they are. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, they, they do take away the skin battle. They do switch around, like we said, EJ. And you're going to enjoy the Brolaf skin. That turns him from a very serious Viking into an American footballer. Right. Almost prom king. Amumu gets it for me, though, dude. Yeah, you happy with that one? Oh, totally, dude. Uh, awesome. we, we saw the prom queen, Annie on the Sunday night, and I was saying almost Prom King and Mumu would be awesome to see. It would, it would. They're Shout out to good. Coldblood for sending EJ Prom King uh, Annie. Yeah. You can actually see Prom Queen Annie at the at the left to Amumu if yeah, he's hiding behind the curtain. He's not the Prom King, so he's sad. Oh, yeah, you can see Annie Mumu. at the front there. you are going to chuck his bandage at her now. Cop that, baby. Yeah. Oh, I'm wondering who's going to have the early impact between Brolaf and almost Prom King Amumu. Both of them like to have a strong early start. Neither of them have the best ganks before level 6. Olaf brings a lot of damage early on and the constant slow of the undertow. Uh, Mumu can get a good gank on and from level 4 on, usually. Yeah, that's true. He, he needs to catch them out of position, though. It's, yeah, yeah. It's fairly easy to sidestep the bandage toss if it comes from the side. Okay, shout out to Blazian, who should be in the tournament but was not aware that it was happening before sign-ups were closed, so hopefully he's able to join in the next one thrown on by these guys. We'll, uh... Oh, I doubt it, dude. Blazian will be platinum bloody Division 1 by then. <laughs> oh, Blazian's a diamond at heart. Oh, yeah, maybe. Better be platinum Division 1. He'll be out. Too good. <laughs> okay, so we're just trying to fix this up here. Uh, there. 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 Oh, hang on, what have I done? There, and I that's know, but it sounds good. Oh, it's just moving the uh, the names down the bottom so we can compare much easier. So uh, we're gonna have a big gank on in mid, maybe. A bit of luck. Oh, I don't know if the blue team actually saw uh, Tang and friends going on. The blue team, of course, being SKT John Patrol. We will go over them, and we can see already that there is a purple ward in the uh, all well, the purple jungle. So they're going to know if the red buff is counter invaded. So, so the purple team are invading, though. Yeah, and uh, there is no wards here at all for the blue team. They're not going to be aware of this just yet. So representing SKT1 John Patrol as they head towards the uh, unknown invade. Gangs on. Very dangerous. Oh, Maka is going to be seen there. Are they going to run it's straight into that? The inner flame goes off by Karma and a lot of AoE damage going down. Steve the Ag Force to flash out. First blood goes to Karma and this is disastrous for Tang and Friends Ignite will take Mendrix down. Olaf picks up the Malphite in the end. 
and will Klepto be taken down? No manages to sidestep the Undertow McNugget XD. Will he manage to get out in a flame lands once again? Danny the Yag gonna flash forward, get the headbutting going on. Another flash by Klepto. Will the uh. Piltover Peacemaker take down? It will. And that fight was completely set up by Delph the Dragon on the Karma. That was a fantastic Mantrid in a flame. If you saw the, the little circle on the ground at the start, EJ, that set it yep. all up. Yep. Oh, nah, beautiful fantastic. play there. Absolutely gorgeous. They got their five man in. They almost got caught though, setting that up, but they got away with it. Came across, ganked the team invading. Beautiful play. Yes. Lovely start to the match. 3 1 the score line. Okay, so we talked about how the aggression at uh, the early levels is very strong in this tournament, and uh, that does stand true. The first blood went to Delta the Dragon, and the next two went to Sexy the Yag down at the bottom lane, so this is going to be very difficult for Tang and Friends to catch back up on already at a three kill deficit. So we will go over the teams representing SKT1 John Patrol with a great start. It is Sexy the Yag on the Caitlyn with Delph the Dragon, his partner in crime as the Karma. Actually may get a lot of damage down. Nice binding by Sunwa will stop Caitlyn in place and the training goes back and forth. There's Steve the Yag will be Malphite up at the top. We have Klepto in the mid as Diana and Danny the Yag on EJ's favorite Amumu. Ooh, go Moo Moo. Moo Moo's just jungling it up at the moment, taking it pretty calm. We can see the aggression going on at the bottom lane. Again, Iron Woodsy forced to flash out of the pilt, pilt over Peacemaker. And we will go over Tang and Friends. So Iron Woodsy will be departing the mid lane and taking up the mantle of Draven at the bottom lane here. Sunwa will be the ever-present AP support. We've got McNugget XD, normally the AD carry is jungler at the moment. Mendrix is up the top as Renekton. Looks like he managed to av avoid a gank. Thanks to the flash with Danny the Ag already blowing cooldowns there. Maka will be the Riven in the mid, and that will actually round all of them up with uh, McNugget XD going to be clearing in the jungle there. The ping goes on by Danny the Yag coming in. There is a Trinket Ward in the bush there, and it looks like Danny not going to try here. No, no, he just, uh, just pushes through, just lets him know he's there. Makes him back out from under the tower as well. We're getting quite a bit of a push on there by Diana in the middle. Um, so Danny the Yang is his crossing sides to keep jungling, just, just, you know, telling her to back off. Which is fair enough, because Riven is completely melee, so, uh, making her a little bit more afraid will deny the creep score. So down at the bottom lane, Tang and Friends actually... Yeah, it also says you can't lure us with your bloody Playboy Bunny outfit, don't try. <laughs> it's, it's interesting, because Riven... We're boys skin... with the internet, we don't need you, baby. <laughs> uh, Riven's skin was, uh, that, that was a forum suggestion to make a Playboy Bunny skin. And a lot of people were really angry because Riven's meant to be this super serious, like, not sexy female character. And then someone said, it's a video game. <laughs> Same thing with Vayne, actually. The more skins that come out, the less clothes that she loses. Mac is going to get jumped on in the mid here. Potentially banished oh, top will nice indeed stuff. land. Is Mac going to be able to beautiful. flash over the wall in time? He's going to try and juke them and save his flash cooldown. Can he potentially oh, do goodness. it? No, Riven's going to try and turn it around, but he goes too far forward and is forced to flash away after the second. Broken Wings takes him too close to the enemy. McNugget XD is down at the bottom lane, but can't do a heck of a lot as the Dark Binding did end up missing, but he is still standing on top of a ward as uh, Danny the Yag is making his way down. McNugget XD going to get the uh, teleport off. They know that Danny the Yag is there. Both junglers are standing on wards at the moment. Iron Woodsy, is he too far forward? Nice Black Shield will stop the stun going off. In a flame will not be dodged, but that fantastic Black Shield from Sunwa going to get him out for the time being. Dude, I got a huge update from the top lane. Mendex, exciting the world with his laning. Oh, it's, it's tough for Malphite because early on his mana costs are very, Setting very the League of Legends world on fire is this Mendex playing the top lane, dude. you got to see it. Oh, he might actually pull off a bit of a kill here. Oh, Steve the Yag going lower and lower. Oh, will Ignite. Oh, close. Oh, it will take him down. Beautifully yes. done by Mendrix. He knew that, that Ignite okay. was enough. In the mid lane, Klepto going on. That's why he casts for game start, dude. He's a pro. Yeah, doing very well there. I was just talking about how it's tough for Malphite having such uh, high mana And uh, you're spot on. Mm. Yeah, well, and then he went a little bit too far forward, and Mendrix pulled out the Renekton damage. And that will be I mean, the second... Nugget's coming in, pushing hard through the middle here. Okay, so, just yeah. Just pushes Klepto out. Just pushing Klepto, just making it back under a tower. Yeah, well, Maka definitely has to go back. He didn't go back after the, uh, the previous death, which... Uh, 
means that it will have to be held for now. Ward going to go down by McNugget XD being a good guy, Greg, and warding up the mid lane. We can see that the armor is being picked up by Malphite as Brutalizer is finished up by Mendrix. He normally goes pure tank Renekton. and it's nice to see him branching out into more of a uh, damaging build. Of course, the armor pen going... Setting the League of, World, League of Legends world on fire is, dude. Mendex with his play tonight. Mendrix. Everyone's watching. Yes, yeah, silly sausage, EJ. It's Mendrix. Mendrix. No, no, dude. He's going to change his name tonight. That's oh, how he's he? setting the world on fire. The oh, Twitch chat is saying it is Mendrix, not Mendix. <laughs> but you're, you're saying bugger them? Dude, it's all good. <laughs> Fair It'll learn him. Okay, so the gold is only 400 in SKT1's favor after their strong play at the start. The only laning phase death at the moment was the Malphite up the top as Mendrix. Going to continue to be aggressive with Renekton's uh, resourcelessness. In the mid lane, we can assume that it will heat up a lot with Klepto having picked up armor from the Seeker's Arm Guard will negate a lot of Riven's 100% physical damage. And of course, the, the added burst of the Lunar Rush will make it very exciting to see who gets the jump on who. But of course, Blade of the Exile will help to finish that off their Klepto Force to last hit under the turret as Danny the Yag going to be headed to the bot lane, runs over a ward, and that's just signal Tang and friends to get the heck out. They do sure not did. yet have either of their ultimates. And it looks like Danny the Yag. He does have Curse of the Sad Mummy. Also does have his flash. Oh, he's coming round, dude. He's going to push you out through the... Oh, depends on this toss. Oh, the oh, minion got there just the minion. The Unfortunate. Oh, well done by uh, Tang and Friends to get out at the right time. McNugget XD going to be coming in on the Olaf in a flame lens onto I am Woodsy. But McNugget is going to pop the ghost and come straight in here. Ragnarok will mean he's able to avoid the curse of the sad mummy, but the damage from it is ridiculous. Nice cleanse by Sexy the Yag to get rid of the slow Delph the Dragon, picking up two kills there. Steve the Yag coming in and throwing out the unstoppable force, picks up Sunwa, and that is a quick on the three for zero that will result in a tower and potentially a dragon going down to SKT1. Very well done there. Yeah, nice team play indeed. Just in the uh, bottom lane there, clearing it out. 8.40 on the clock and already out to a 6-2 lead here in this first map of the semi-final of the Gold Coast League of Legends competition. And now at a 3,000 gold lead after that play, so very well done there. Even though Curse of the Sad Mummy didn't CC as much with the Black Shield, the burst of it was ridiculous, and they will indeed transition that into a Dragon. McNugget XD will be headed down as uh, Maka is around, as the Riven is... Uh, oh, Danny the Egg's falling lower and lower to the Dragon, who will end up picking it up. Amumu gets taken down straight away by McNugget XD, and this is going to be turned around by Tang and Friends. Very nicely done by McNugget. XD. Sexy the Ag, will he be able to teleport over? Oh, Does he dodge the undertow? Just, just barely manages to dodge that, so ends yep. up being one for one with Maka going down, but Dragon going the way of Tang and friends as uh, Brolaf sprinted straight up to the mummy and smacked him in the face. Oh, nice work by Tang and friends. Getting a bit of their own back there. Whoa. Mendix sending the League of Legends world on fire tonight with uh, the wrong name as Mendix will be trading oh, up. Oh, totally, dude. <laughs> He's up for a name change. You were telling me earlier. Oh, I need a name change, EJ. I'm sure you'll you'll need to pay for it for that to go through. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I am Woodsy and Sunwa working on picking up their ultimate abilities, which uh, will definitely increase their AoE potential. McNugget XD continuing to give Danny the Ag a little bit of a hard time, but Klepto is incoming. Will the blue buff be donated over to Klepto? Actually, McNugget XD going to be jumped on by bandage shots, but Ragnarok makes him immune to CC. Danny the Yag is forced to smite the blue buff. Mac is coming to in to help in. out, though. Klepto is going to jump onto McNugget XD, but oh, will the stun from Mendrick be enough? No. Is in as well. Oh, Klepto, can the shield save him? No. No, it will not. And the blue buff was denied from Klepto as well as his life. Steve the Yag is trying to do as much as he can, but Malphite's damage output not really the most. Karma and Caitlyn were headed up, but purple team will disengage. So nicely done by Tang and friends to deny the blue buff from Klepto. They traded one for one for it in the end, but jungler for mid, not the worst of trades, but the mid tower for Tang and friends going to come under fire here. Yeah, Danny the Yang tried to get up there and help uh, Malphite out, but just couldn't get up in time. Just too much distance. Yeah, the uh, the bottom lane have decided to roam over to the mid. The tower is going to take a lot of damage with Iron Woodsy just sitting at the bottom as Draven trying to catch up in the farm. The uh, the Qs from the supports going to be traded off there, and the tower will end up there falling. The tower. That is two pieces of infrastructure to zero for Tang and friends, but this top one is falling dangerously low. Steve the Yag running out of mana. Uh, does he have enough for the Sunfire Cape? Not just yet. 
Sunwat going to be recalling, probably pick up the uh, Nomad's Medallion. And where has the Draven gone? He's back in the base. Does have a BF Sword, which is a massive boost to the Spinning Axe damage. Also has the Whirling Death, so has a little bit of global presence now. Caitlyn's ultimate is long range, but not quite global. And we can see that the gank may be going in the mid lane here. Maka going to try and do a bit of baiting. Although McNugget is standing on a ward at the moment. And Danny the Yag will be coming in. There's no tower at their back. Nah, not at all. And uh, no ganking going on. Just a bit of harassment of each other. Change it up. They're just doing farming now. Okay, so McNugget XD on the Olaf is starting to reach the point where his damage will peak for the game, and unless he picks up a number of kills, won't be going any further than that CDR has been picked up in the Ancient Golem by Danny the Yag. Going to be being very, very bold here. Actually. Yeah, very. So, here he comes. No, he backs out. He realizes a three on one. Yeah. Decides not... his stink is not quite loose enough for that. No. <laughs> Okay, is the teleport available for Steve the Yag? No, not quite yet, as Mandrix going to continue pushing up. Maga Force back in the mid lane here, going to go over and get the rates for himself. Danny the Yag going to be forced away from the walls after placing some very deep wards in the, the, the vision control of SKT, J Patrol, or John Patrol. is very good at the bottom part of the river. Could be better for Tang and friends, but uh, they're going to continue farming up. And I'm wondering when the next engagement will happen. There is currently a 3,000 gold lead to SKT1. Well, good old Medrick setting the uh, League of Legends world on fire here in the top lane. He's doing a good job, in fact, pushing down on the tower. Yeah, this will be the tower going down for sure, unless Steve the Yag blows the teleport, which is not quite up just yet. But it looks like Klepto and oh, Danny Danny's the coming in to try and hold it out, oh, though. Klepto's coming from the river as well. Medrick will be completely aware of that, thanks to his ward. He does have Dominus oh, available. Oh, let's see what he can do. Oh, he's actually going to use Klepto for a gap closer on the slice and dice. Flash forward and curse of the sad mummy by Danny oh, the Yag. Oh, setting the League of Legends world on fire. Oh, unfortunately, did not have the health to go through that. Down at the bottom lane, we can see a four on two at the moment. McNugget XD going to blow the ghost and get down onto Sexy the Yag. Steve the Yag going to be teleporting in. And will McNugget XD go down? Actually, Maka is in here going to get a double knock up there. Unstoppable Force will stop him for now. Oh. Whirling Death is not needed to get that kill. McNugget XD going to be forced out, but the flash forward and the seismic shot by Steve the Yag. Sunwa, will he fall to the tower? No ignite is. Oh, well. I am Woodsy going to pick that one up. Forced to flash and barrier away from the tower. Top going to fall to the blue team. It ends up being a 2 for 1. Down to the bot. 2 for 2 with Delph the Dragon picking up the rampage with a nice inner flame there. Maka going to try and. And pick that one up. Hex Drinker will negate some of Karma's damage. And the top tower still getting pressured by SKTP Gen Patrol. Yeah, great job indeed by the um, the blue team. Yes, SKT. Kicking ass. Yes, that's them. Doing fantastically so far. Really, so really one sided. Is actually going to interrupt Klepto's recall Whoa, up at just. the top. Forced to blow the flash, McNugget XD. If Can he I lands another him? undertow, and that was very unfortunate, unfortunate oh, for Klepto. Man. Beautifully done by Mendrix, though. His spidey senses were tingling. And leveled up off it. Nice. Yeah. So level two in the Dominus will be picked up from that. Poor Danny the Yag. His recall went off just as Mendrix and entered the bush, so he wasn't able to cancel it in time. Eleven-seven is the score line here. In this first semi-final, the Gold Coast League of Legends tournament. So after this is the a, first uh, semi-final, uh, as Coldblood you were saying. Yep. So winner of this one will go through next week. Yep, to the grand final, and uh, we'll Exciting have to. Days. Yeah, we'll have to find out who will be the. Bit other of action one. happening around Dragon. Oh, so Ma Tang and friends. I was going to say Macker and friends going to be the ones getting this one. Danny the Ag is nowhere near, so there will be no smite available for the blue team. Pulled over Peacemaker. Oh, I thought that uh, the Inner Flame got that, but I don't think it actually exploded. Nicely done by Tang and Friends to secure that objective. Mendrick's going to run into Danny the Yag. There's probably not much going to happen from it. Maka was jumped on by Steve the Yag, but Unstoppable Force was not used as it was not available yet. McNugget XD going to jump forward onto Delph as a Dark Binding will land, but Mendrick's going to get turned around on. Does he have Dominus available? He actually has already popped it. Going to end up falling to the blue team's burst, and the purple team were not in position to deal with that one. The mid tower Going to be taking more and more damage. Unstoppable Force goes in, locks up both Maka and McNugget. XD going to end up falling. Oh, Sunwise going to get jumped on. Can he get out? No. Gets taken down by Klepto and Tang and Friends being demolished at the moment as the tier two in the mid will yeah. end up falling. And middle towers are pushing. under serious threat. 
Beautiful work, dude. Good teamwork, good combinations, and good timing with their attacks. It's, they just got a good roll on. Okay, so mid tier three will end up getting taken down. Tang and friends need to be a lot more coordinated than that. It was a nice unstoppable force by Steve the Egg to initiate that one. He is looking very scary on the armor count. Not going to take very much damage from the mostly physical team of Tang and friends. Blue buff getting checked by Klepto, but it is not there. And that will definitely mean an hourglass for the Diana. Danny the Yag looks like he's going for Sunfire. Has, uh, I think he actually has enough to finish it. He does indeed going to finish that one up there. And of course Sunfire already finished on Steve the Yag. Looking for the purple team. Sunfire has been finished by Mendrix. Going in a little bit of a 1v1 on Steve the Yag at the moment. Sunwa is working towards the Talisman of Ascension. That will be key to uh, stop the engagement. Nugget XD has got an Ancient Golem. Maka is, uh, hasn't completed too many items just yet, but it looks like he's going for the Black Cleaver. Purple team are around the Baron, but I don't think they can go for it, particularly with Delph the Dragon heading up. He does not get caught out as uh, he reacts in time. Danny the Yag will get binded up. Mendrix going to jump onto, or already is on top of him, as at the uh, top part of the jungle, Delph the Dragon ends up getting caught out, but should be able to escape this one. Yeah, Mecca going to back off as Undertow will land, and both these teams ready to fight once again. Top part of the rivers look like looks like a warehouse. We'll yeah, no, huge there. engagement coming up here. This could be quite decisive, actually. Okay, so are there any cooldown, any big cooldowns at the moment? Unstoppable Force is not available. I don't think uh, Curse Lumu's is ready to rock. Oh, Danny the Ag going to pull off a fantastic bandage toss, but uh, is forced to disengage as the Black Shield would stop the Curse of the Sad Mummy, who I think just actually came off cooldown after that catch there. The inhibitor in the mid still standing for Tang and friends. They definitely want to try and control that one. Maka going to take a little bit of damage from Steve the Ag. Undertow will assist in clearing out oh, the green wave. Well, Danny death. misses with his shot. Oh, Mendrick's going to be jumping in. And Unstoppable Force is though. good. But the damage from Blue Team is just too much. Danny the Ag will end up falling to the Ignite. I'm Woodsy going to last hit that one. As it is actually two for three in Tang and friends' favor. They managed to turn it around with a great Morgana ultimate and just employing all oh. of their oh, AoE. Going to pick up Steve the Yag. Klepto not going to, or barely does get out. Ends up being 4-4-2 four, four, in Tang and Friends' favor. They'll be very happy with that. Yeah, around. very happy. Time to push, boys. Oh! Just as pause goes out. Oh, as pause goes out. Woodsy has disconnected, so uh, we'll have to wait for him to reconnect. But that was fantastically done, EJ. They were, uh, all things considered, they should have lost that fight, but they, uh, th there was so many well done things, stand aside from I Am Woodsy, interrupted them quite a bit, the Soul Shackles from Morgana was fantastic, Riven got a lot of AoE stunning off with, uh, both the sec the third prop of, uh, Broken Wings and the Key Burst, and then Mendrix was just an absolute brick wall, forced to be dealt with, and he k stayed alive long enough for the fight to go in their favour. Dude, he is setting the League of Legends world on fire tonight. Oh, for sure. McNugget they are all watching. Doing a decent job as well. He was pouring out a lot of the damage. And Klepto probably only survived because of the hourglass. We uh, saw Maka in the back of the enemy team for quite a while. And... Not unusual to see Maka from behind. <laughs> Was, um, Platinum, dude. We're having you 4 know. Geek and Jakey talking in the Twitch chat. They uh, are on... Doge for LOL, which we've casted before as well, EJ. Get some. Get some. And uh, they do enjoy watching Maka show off his pro skills as the mid lane Riven. Uh, we had a shout out to Klingo, who loves to uh, analyze what Maka does. And Maka I'm... gets in from behind. <laughs> from he does, dude. We've seen it all the time. Yeah. He loves it. Oh, he had to wait for Sneaky backdoor raider. First. Okay, so with that one, the the purple team still four and a half thousand gold behind, but they hold on to the inhibitor for now. We will resume, and a blue team going to be respawning up here. What are they going to move for? The dragon is a little bit off of respawning. Mac are going to be heading down towards that way. Not sure if he'll take blue for himself. And uh, we, we saw the counter initiation in that fight there, EJ. was very yep. well done by Tang and friends. The, particularly the soul shackles out of Sunwa and um, Maka with his AoE disruption as well. It, it, 
it threw off the tempo. You saw a really nice ensemble force and Curse of the Sad Mummy, but yeah. the rest of it, like the actual damage part. Dude, once Curse of the Sad Mummy broke, that was it. Game over for the for the poor blue team. Yeah, they got rolled after that. Okay, Mendrix is up at the top, or Mendex, which sounds like spandex. Uh, oh yeah, he play. loves wearing spandex, dude. How did you know that? <laughs> oh, his name's just so similar. You oh. showed me that. Okay, so Steve, the, actually the top tower never ended up going down despite being low health for so long. As Steve the Yag, he does have teleport available, that's why he is currently at top. This is very dangerous for Tang and friends, you can't be in the jungle against an Amumu Malphite, but they're making it work for them in a flame. We'll go up, teleport in by Steve the Yag. Yeah, going Danny's to, coming uh, in. Draw, and Subwall Force only hits Mendrix and I am Woodsy. Shut down on the Diana Klepto, will end up falling. Mendrix is going to flash forward and pick up Sexy the Yag. The chase is on, onto Mac but you can't chase a Riven. Sunwa gonna get the Soul Shackles off. Ends up falling to in a flame, but Steve the Yag, even he is not tanky enough to survive. He will be forced to flash out. Danny the Yag gonna try and pick up the return kill. Mac again again. Oh, nice oh, hop over the wall. Danny Ends up own. being four for one, even better than the previous one. Delph the Dragon Karma is very, very slippery. Can she work her way out of there? Stand Run aside. Away. Will force her to stand on the no. side. And ends up falling. It is an ace for Tang and friends after losing the couple last couple of fights very decisively mm -mm, they turn it around orangey goodness dude Tang and friends Tang and friends certainly turning that one around that was fantastically done i thought it, it, it was it was a bit uh, it, it's a bit dodgy going in the jungle when there's a malfight and mumu on the other team but they managed to get the initiation off before steve the yag was in and it was just expertly done Really brought the scores back too. We were looking at 17-11 uh, just, you know, 30 seconds ago. And it's now uh, the kills are up to 18-16. So the game balancing out in some regards. Yeah, previous two fights were uh, nine kills to, I believe, three or four. So fantastically done by Tang and friends showing their coordination despite being behind. They are only 2,000 gold behind now, which was less than half of a couple of minutes ago. And we'll have to see how they manage to take this one. Black Cleaver will be finished up on Maka, which will, of course, make Draven's damage be ridiculous. He should be able to pick up his Phantom Dancer now. He could actually uh, start going for the Last Whisper if he wanted, or uh, go Phantom Dancer into the Pickaxe. Dragon will be taken by SKT1. Nice advance forward there. And Baron is a little bit of a danger for them, but... You're going to tower dive out here on the uh, bottom. Oh, they oh no, they've changed their mind. They're going to swing back to mid. Yeah, I think they've realized that Baron is wide open. They need to get back over to that area. Mendrix is going to take the actual first tower for SKT1. John Patrol will now fall. Oh, skills. So total skills. That is exactly what Tang and friends need to do. They need to turn these fights into objectives. They got the top tower. They did lose Dragon, but they... Uh, they managed to push it forward just a little bit. Inhibitor, once again, are going to be have, or oh, SKT are going to have a crack at it. We'll nice recall see. and defense set up there by the, the uh, Tang boys. Yeah, we'll have to. Got do. into position to block mid quickly then. Okay, so Tang and friends, they can't get caught up in Curse of the Sad Mummy. They've got to do that strong disengage that they have been showing and then go in the fight when it is on their terms. I really like the Morgana pick. It's very smart against a Mumu. It means that the AD carry cannot be uh, locked up too much. Iron Woodsy having some connection issues, but that's the problem with Draven. He's got a massive damage output, but he is very, very easy to jump on top of. The Black Shield completely negates that. And the internet just can't cope with how good he is, dude. That's why he keeps lagging out. Yeah. <laughs> I think he lags out every game, actually. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah. it. Internet just comes and creams its pants. You know, Draven, Splooge, Internet out. Okay, so we got some people in the Twitch chat asking what Tang is, EJ. So do you want to go ahead and explain that one? Oh, dude, when I was a kid, Tang was like a, a drink, an orange drink that you yeah. mix up in so a glass of water. No, no, dude, like an orange flavored drink. How do you dudes not know what Tang is? I mean, goodness sakes. It's sort of hey, cultural we're, education. We're youngins. You can't blame us. Google. Google. Google images well, for Tang. Tang orange drink. I'll go do it right now. Wait for the pause. Bloody oath. Okay, so Tang drink. Let's find out what this is while we wait for the game to resume. There's a bit of arguing about the uh, the allotted break time in the chat, so hopefully uh, they can work that out. Wow, and man, you can still buy the shit on eBay. Yeah, look at that. Tang drink. It's uh, It comes in those squeezy things. It was formulated in 1957, and it was oh, marketed yeah. in powder form. Oh, powder's the way to go, dude. Yep. That's what I'm saying. These dudes, a glass of orangey goodness. Yeah. Tang and friends, and it's working for them. 
no, well, yeah, not really. Doing a great job. I think these guys are all young though, so I don't know where they got Tang from. Maybe their parents are into it. Probably the Wu Tang Clan or something, dude. Oh, Tang was used in the early NASA manned space flights. They used that oh, because yeah. it was transportable. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. It's good shit, man. <laughs> then they probably worked out, of course, cancer and took it off the market. But you know. Oh man, everything gives you cancer these days. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Okay, shout out to Rec Game who is joining the chat with the dog symbols. Do dog for lol. As, uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. And dog for lol, dude. Remember, it's not Doge for lol. You had it wrong all along. Oh, it's dog for lol. Doggy for lol. I think you were the one saying doggy. Damn straight. <laughs> they love a bit of doggy, this team, man. They're just trying to be a bit. They're trying to be a little subtle to the ladies, so they call it Doge for lol. But, you know, all they want is down on all fours and going. <laughs> Which one down on all fours? Dude, they're not fussy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so YAG doesn't actually stand for anything, guys. I thought it might have been um, Yttrium Aluminium Garnet or something, or uh, Youth Something Group, but it doesn't stand for anything, they told me. So, you, you see the YAG at the end of their names, EJ? Oh, dude, I'm just amazed at your first reference. You got the word aluminium out in the shower cast. I'm, I'm still dumbfounded. That's outstanding. Yeah, it was y yttrium something, like Y-T-T-R-I-U-M. It was very weird. weird. Cool. And it ends up being a gem. Most likely it just means you are gay as he smashes you with his amumu, but we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Maka fan club has reared its beautiful head here as the game will now resume. I don't think Iron Woodsy actually... Dude, it's the Mendrix fan it. club reared its head. Oh. He's setting the League of Legends world on fire the tonight. Mendex. Is it read its head? The Mendex fan club. It must be. Pouring out of the closet. Coming out of the closets, left, right, and center. <laughs> okay, so blue team and purple team going to be posturing around here. There are wards all over the place. The vision for them both is actually quite decent. The well, Both teams know exactly where the other one is. So it looks like it will come down to another open engagement. If if the if the Tang and Friends guys can stay away from the chokehold into their base, they'll be looking sweet. And of course, EJ, we do have another game after this. So uh, the 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 momentum of winning the first game in a series is on the line here. And oh, dude, and it's always the benefit. Any series, any series, you go into the one nil lead. You know, confidence has to be high. Yes. Look at the Australian cricket team, for goodness sake. You know, we could be witnessing England here in this League of Legends match today. Absolute collapse. Oh, Kit was talking a lot about that. There was something about, um... Some... Kit talks a lot of shit about a lot of things, dude. <laughs> some Pom got injured and they refused to have him treated here or something? Oh, no. He just cry, baby. has to go home. Got a sore foot. Oh. And is something wrong with our doctors? No, well, no, dude. He's just got a sore foot and he wants an excuse for losing. Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> you know, they just can't handle the fact they suck. Okay, fair enough. We rock. <laughs> well, I was hearing a lot of that, so I guess we did win the cricket game in the end. Now, this is the vision for the blue team. They've got no idea that the Baskebab has been started, but they're warding to advance up. This is very dangerous. Tang and Friends, EJ, they're grouped up against a Malphite and Mumu. That is never yeah, a Yeah, Mumu's idea. coming in. Wait for the bandage oh, toss. But Go instantly, Tang and Friends going to disengage there. McNugget XD going to be jumping straight onto Klepto. Oh, he bandage toss the bandage misses. Toss. From Danny the Yag, so the initiation will be a little bit harder. McNugget XD taking more and more oh, damage. Hourglass be used by Klepto. Oh, nice left. bandage. Oh, nice curse of the sad mummy there. Damage going off all over the place. The unstoppable force will lock up Macker enough for him to go down. Come a on, lot of health bars looking very, very low. And I don't yeah, think anyone so. has gone down just yet for the blue team. They're going to jump onto Sunway. He cannot flash out of that one. 4-4-0 four, four, in the blue team's favor. And they will take this advantage to go after Baskebab. That was not a good idea to group up against the AoE crowd control we talked about. Dude, nice comeback. They've been rickrolled in the previous two uh, group encounters. So they'd be really happy that they've come back strong there and um, pretty much teamed down the other team. Okay, so Baron almost takes Danny the Egg down, but will end up falling to SKT1. John Patrol, who now have a comfortable six and a half thousand gold lead. So, Tang it, friends, they've got to be more smart about where they engage. They can't group up against this comp. They've got to come in from different sides, which you can't when you're in a very narrow river. Dude, they're back out to a six kill lead. That's the highest I think they've been so far tonight. So, they're fairly consistent when that lead gets eroded. Uh, by Tang and his buddies, they get in there and kick back hard. Oh, okay, so we'll have to wait. And it, it was a bit weird. McNugget XD was trying to start the fight off, but the rest of his team were hanging back a little bit, I guess because of a Moomoo. And yep. he was just taking damage over Pussies, and over. Dude. 
Oh, it looks like Blue Team going to be going straight for the jugular here, advancing up. Danny the Ad going to be hit by Dark Binding, but Ancient Golem means that that will not last for very long. Purple Team going to quickly get their recalls off to try yeah, they're and all defend recalling. this inhib. A Barrened Up Team, although, of course, a lot of their ultimates are on cooldown for a little bit longer. The Spresso are comp not the strongest at the moment, but the Baron could well carry them through that. Tang and friends almost have Soul Shackles up and Unstoppable Force and... Curse of the Sad Mummy now going to be available, so it will be who starts off the fight. Klepto did a nice hourglass in the previous fight, stopping him going down. Inhibitor will fall, and Blue Team going to respectfully back out now. Going to go straight for the bottom tower. Steve the Yeah going to be able to tank this one up for days and days. Purple Team going to try and get over there in time to defend it. The minion wave will be pushed up, and Tang and friends, they got to choose some time to fight it has to be under their tower and, and it's going to be now dude out. and it's going to be around bottom yeah they're going to give up a tower if they don't back this one up because baron buff means the siege will be very strong for a caitlin team so if they don't go in now they've got to back off it looks like they're hesitating a little bit as uh, yeah the tower will end up falling without an engagement will they go for it mendrix will be uh oh Almost snared up by Karma. That is a nice snare on the Klepto, but it will not signal the start of the fight. As both teams just waiting here. Of course, the Baron buff we talked about is going to uh, sustain the blue team quite nicely. And when a Tang and Friends going to go in, the longer they wait, the more their mid lane will push with the super minions. Yeah, very interesting, dude. They're just waiting. They're holding back here. Um, blue team are pushing up, just a little bit of niggle, bit of niggle, bit of, you know, get your mother, come here. Every time but it's not really up, working. Kate gets easy shots. Caitlyn's the yeah. highest range AD carry in the game without any abilities. So it's very easy for her to whack away at the tower. Okay, mid lane going to be pushed out by Maka. Blue team continuing their siege here. The top lane is balanced at the moment. Maka going to clear the wave and try and get over to the bot lane as quickly as possible. This could be the tower going down. It is falling lower and it's lower. It's definitely going to drop, dude. Has taken it down and still there has been no engage from Inhibitor's Purple Inhibitor's going as well. Oh, this is dangerous. They need to get an engage on soon. But uh, there is no tower there for the Mendrix going to go in well. Oh, that does a lot of damage. Yes. Sexy the Yag going to be forced out of there as Olaf goes after him. The AoE from Purple Team is fantastic. Sexy the Yag ends up falling. I am Woodsy is on a rampage and Blue Team are in full retreat. McNugget XD going to try and run away from the Karma. He's getting healed up by Perseverance. Will it be enough? Inner Flame has to come back up and he will indeed get it. Sexy the Yag continuing to run out of here and Maka forced back into the base. But that was very nice. Nicely done, three for one in the purple team's favor, and I might just find out exactly what happened in that fight there, EJ. As uh, do you want to fill us in with a bit of background? Well, dude, the uh, engagement's going to be back on here. Steve the Yag is doing his best around mid near here, Dragon, um, but it's a four on one, so he's got balls of steel to try and go out here and uh, break this up. And uh, he's gone in. He's always got backed up though. Delta Dragon's in here with him. They're both pulling out. They're gone Catholic. So Getting out of there as fast as they can. Okay, so there was any... Oh, Mendrix setting the League of Legends world on fire. Could be going down here. Okay, oh, this could be embarrassing for a public show. Oh, and he's out of there. Look at that. How embarrassing for Mendrix, dude. The world watching. Oh, oh, looks like there was some nice kiting back and forth. Mendrix does end up falling just like you said. EJ, I am Woodsy going to take down Delph the Dragon, who's been doing a great job on the karma. Ends up being one for one. That was very ballsy by the blue team to go Balls in 2v3 here. like that and end up with a one for one trade. They do pick up the Dragon in the end. And, uh, oh, I don't know when this game's going to end, EJ. Both teams doing a fantastic effort. And even when... The, even when um, SKT, John Patrol are barrened up. They get two towers and almost an inhibitor. They still lose the fight. So this could this is still teetering on the edge of a knife at the moment. Oh, dude, it's just the semi-finals action. This is what we want. Tuesday night, League of Legends action has been brought to you by GameStar, sponsored by OzGamers. Get over to OzGamers.com for all your gaming needs. Oh, for sure. Huge shout-out to our sponsors. Yeah, we do have them on the overlay. I think it was in the... Uh... But when we're in the champ select, Oz Gamers is up there. If you need help spelling it, it is A U S, not O Z. 
as some people uh, want to uh, name it. And I really feel like I'm Woodsy needs to pick up a last whisper here. Here's a the big push up mid. Here we go. It's going to be on for Young and Old. Inhibitor is back up for the mid, so all three inhibitors are up, although two are exposed, and the bottom one is a little bit damaged. So can the purple team pull it off again? Binding will not land, but uh, the blue team a lot more hesitant to go in this time. Maka just hopping back and forth as Undertow will miss. And what's going to start this fight off, EJ? Well, I don't know, dude. Someone's going to uh, make a great effort here to get in on it. Maka's trying hard. Steve the Yag just teasing him, absolutely teasing him. Long range shot by Caitlyn. Gets no one. Yeah, it's very difficult as a pure melee to deal with Karma Caitlyn. They just have yeah. so much poke, but Maka is uh, weathering it with the Valor, giving him a very spammable shield. I'm waiting for Danny the Yag to just let Rip here with his bandage toss and come in. They're oh. pushing up. They pushed him off the inhibitor, so they're going to get the inhibitor all likely. Oh, there oh goes... Renekton comes in, though, to spoil the party. Oh, wow. Now the Mumu lets it go. Oh, Klepto is going to jump forward onto Maka. The Blade of the Exile, Wind Slash, will end up missing. Nugget XD falls down, but Iron Woodsy manages to get a kill. And the blue team is actually quite low here. They're going to get the inhibitor, and they're going to ping the bottom one. This could be a mistake. There is still a lot of cooldowns available for the purple team. Flash forward, and the binding does end up missing. Danny the Yag is get, gets oh, ignited Danny's in trouble. and forced to flash out. Can the purple team pick anything up here? Karma making the disengage very, very easy. And it looks as though it was a one-for-one -one trade with the mid inhibitor going down. Yep. Yep. Or could anything else happen here? Maka is still chasing, but Karma oh, makes it so hard. difficult. Oh, we got another one after this, EJ. This isn't even the end. <laughs> oh, I know, dude. It's outstanding action. It's Tuesday night League of Legends action. This is what people want on their Tuesday night, dude. They want this sort of intense action. They don't want a 15-minute bloody steamroll of a game. This is semi-finals. Teams have got to step up and play hard. I mean, you know, there's bad blood out here. These dudes really want to bloody go each other. Yeah, particularly since the, uh, the talking about Maka being uh, not actually gold or silver. So Dude, it's simple it is. Really want to win. Gold Coast League of Legends uh, tournament. It is where your bronze, silver, and gold champions play, plus Maka. So, bottom tower will end up falling, but will the purple team be jumped on here? Nice binding by Sunwa. Will get the disengage there. That is the second tower going down for Tang and friends. So, once again, turning a one fight into an advantage by chasing the enemy team all the way to there and juggling the tower aggro. Sec. Oh. Now, Baron has respawned. I'm wondering if the next fight will go on there. But Tang and friends need to be careful. They can't group up in the Bazkabab pit. So Sunfire Cape on the way for McNugget XD is doing a good job of soaking damage in the fights. Definitely keeping the squishies alive long enough to get the job done. And uh, the Soul Shackles from Sunwhite continuing to cause a lot of disruption. Has not had uh, the inclination to go for AP just yet. I am Woodsy going to recall with his 1600 gold. If I were him, I'd definitely go Pickaxe and Longsword and maybe some kind of defensive item. That is indeed what he will go for. Needs Quicksilver Sash after the Last Whisper. And Bazkabab is in the sights for both teams here but is also warded by both teams at the moment. So in the Twitch chat, we have the calls out for the tower going to even up. Not quite. There is uh, still less than 6,000 gold in the blue team's favor, but at this point, that doesn't really mean too much. It's going to come down to who engages properly. Draven is, and Riven getting scarier and scarier the longer the game goes on. And Caitlyn, of course, has no steroids. As Talisman of Ascension and the Karma Mantra Shield going to get them to catch up to Maka very, very easily. Cannot escape that one. And Maka caught out completely and utterly. Will that spell the end for Tang and friends? Are you there, EJ? Sorry guys, we'll have to figure out what's going on. So it looks like I am by myself. The bottom inhibitor going to be worked on by SKT, John Bratol. Delta Dragon going to get binded up there. Klepto going to take down the inhibitor. That is two. There is a large wave pushing for the blue base here. I am Woodsy going to get a little ballsy and jumping forward there. Kate is whacking away at the tower. Riven's not up for 18 seconds. And the pause happens once again. As the Twitch chat will catch up to Maka being caught out there. We just need to figure out what is going on. Poor Woodsy is uh, disconnected, and I think he will be pretty key in this fight. As, uh, Cold blood? I'm going to have to bail on you. I'm sorry, man. Oh, I've that's got... okay, my friend. One of my friends is drunk as a skunk and just is turning up in a taxi in like two minutes. Okay. All right. Well, it's you like better 10 o'clock go... at night. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, you better go take care of him, EJ. 
Thanks, man. So it's just a she, and she's crying. She? This oh. isn't going to be good at all. Oh, dear. Okay. We'll get to it. <laughs> See you, dude. Have a good one. Good luck to everybody. Okay. Kick our semifinals action. All right, take it easy, EJ. We'll have to see how this game ends, guys, and then we will be bringing you game two in the series. We'll check what's uh, going on in the chat. There's more talking about the pause. That is a, I am a one-man show. <laughs> I would, I'd love to get you in, Klingo. If you want to join me for game two, you'd be very welcome. And uh, wondering what's going to happen in this fight. Macra is not available for 18 seconds. The game will now resume. And is this the end? The uh, One of the Nexus Towers will end up falling. Mendrix going to be going in. Sexy the Yag is going to cleanse. But the Whirling Death will pick him up. Mendrix, can he get out of the fight? He does indeed. But McNugget XD oh, actually gets out too. Klepto is going to use the shield to survive from Iron Woodsy. Going to flash forward very boldly. Ends up being 2 for 0 with the tower going down. Sexy the Yag going to try and get out is being relentlessly chased flashes away from the dark binding and Maka wants some revenge is going to continue chasing up here Oh, is Mecca going to be able to get on top of Steve the Egg? We'll just have to hang up from EJ so he can't hear his parakeet. Blade of the Exile popped by Mecca XD. The tower is still there. Will Seismic Shard be enough for Steve the Egg to get out? He's whacking away, and it looks like the uh, disengage will be successful. Mecca may get caught out once again. Baron will be started up by his team. No, they are going to disengage. Mendrix will dissuade them from chasing, and the Tang and friends, they've got to be very careful that this doesn't turn into a Baron for the blue blue team. Whew, okay, so shout out to Sepokasaur, who's saying they like it better with just me. I'd be happy for Klingo to join me. Uh, we'll have to see what ends up. This game has to end before we get a game two, of course, as it is very close at the moment. This next Baron could well decide the fate of this game, as uh, Mac is being very, very bold on the ribbon. It needs to work towards some kind of defensive item here, or maybe something to be able to chase a bit better. Quicksilver Sash would be a good bet, as Undertow will grant vision for the Tang and Friends guys. Can they get in for the steal? They are working towards uh, the Baron. It is at about a third of its HP remaining. Will it be enough for them to go in? Whirling Death gets popped, and McNugget XD is in the Baron pit. Blue Team ends up getting the Baron Maka falling lower and lower. Danny the Yag is in the middle of the mix. McNugget XD and Mendrix falling lower and lower Danny the Egg going to be ignited up and ends up falling. He will be the first casualty of the fight. Purple team, can they disengage? They are against a Kama, but Iron Woodsy is being ignored and gets a triple kill as Draven's damage is getting ridiculous and Purple team walk away with a 5 for 0 despite losing the dragon. That was expertly done and now they're going to move on to their third tower of the game. The mid is going to be pinged out by Mendrix. They wisely send one man back to defend and the Nexus is trying to clear at the creeps. There's another 10 seconds until Klepto is back up. But this could be the push that ends the game. Mendrick should be able to defend the Nexus there. Inhibitor is going to be worked on by the Tang and friends. Can they move forward? Klepto is now up and the rest of his team is not far behind. Will they decide to back out? They do indeed. Iron Woods, he going to be working on Klepto actually. Does he have Hourglass available? He does indeed. But he could end up falling here as Danny the Yeah going to be not able to do anything at all. Nice kill by I Am Woodsy saying stuff that to Draven's bad late game. He is being ignored in the fight, is doing ridiculously well, and ends up being an inhibitor going down on the one lane that the purple team still have their inhibitor for. So despite losing the Baron, losing that 1500 gold, the buff is not up on the blue team. And this just got a whole lot more interesting. I wonder what Tang and friends will be able to do. Sepokasaur going back and forth on whether he supports Tang and friends or not. As, uh, so the inhibitor for the purple team is going to be respawning soon. That will give them the freedom to try and exploit that inhibitor being down for SKT. John Patrol. Dragon will end up being taken down here as the aforementioned purple inhibitor does go back up. Frozen Heart and Randuin's completed by Steve the Yag. That is very smart against the Riven and Draven and even Olaf. But we'll have to see if it ends up working for them. Iron Woods, he's got a Guardian Angel rather than Quicksilver Sash. He could easily uh, swap those out once the GA gets popped. Oh, this is going to be a very difficult feat for the blue team. 
The fights have not been going their way despite having everything that they need to. They just need to get a, a strong initiation on. And I, I, I feel like I Am Woodsy and Sunwai have just done such a great job in these fights of uh, utilizing the positioning that their champions need. Draven staying the heck back and Sunwa staying in the middle of the enemy team. Mendrix and McNugget SD uh, being great brick walls and Macker of course pumping out a lot of the AoE damage and pressuring the back line along with the Olaf. Now Delph the Dragon has done a great job in the fights. He's done a lot of pickings off with the Inspire. Now has the Mikhail's Crucible that could be key in the fights. We have the uh, the Randuins and the Frozen Heart for the Malphite. We have actually Riley's Crystal Scepter picked up by Danny the Egg. Going to be passively slowing everyone around him. For Sexy the Yag, we have a Last Whisper, Phantom Dancer, Bloodthirst, and Infinity Edge combo. And he has the Red Pot, so he's going to try and pump out as much damage as possible. Going to be very hard to uh, out-damage Iron Woodsy, but of course, Caitlyn has the range and the net for hopping away. Now, the last Tier 1 for the blue team will be worked on here. As the Twitch chat is saying, raise your Yags. We'll allow that one, because we still don't know what Yags are. In a Flame will miss as the purple team get away from that one now the tier one is uh, while well, the minions will be cleared out too quickly there you never ever see a tier one left up this late now tang and friends have minions pushing at both the top and the bot so this is exactly where they want to be sitting in the mid lane sieging out as uh, steve the yag forced to back up he does have teleport available of course but uh, it may be too late one, once, once that one goes off the bottom tower falling very low as well the last tier one for the blue team will now fall and oh, will the teleport come in by Steve the Yag it will indeed Mendrix will he be able to get out nice talisman of ascension by Sunwa to get the disengage off but unstoppable force will end up landing on them Sunwa instantly goes down Bromasia screams Olaf as he goes into the fight Guardian Angel is up on Klepto Mendrix falling lower and lower Danny the Yag will now fall can they take down Iron Woodsy that is the key target here Steve the Yag is going to end up falling sexy the Yag trying to take down Iron Woodsy and flashes forward to take down the Kate he does have Guardian Angel available but he will not even need it. Yo, yes, he does. The, uh, or was it Ignite? It was Ignite by Diana. Takes that one down. But it ends up being Klepto and Delph the Dragon are the only remaining members. Delph the Dragon is now by himself. Can he defend his base for 30 seconds? I am Woodsy is advancing forward on the Draven. And by advancing forward, I mean he's at the Wolves healing back up as Mendrix is tanking up the tower for his AD carry to take it down. Karma's very good at stopping sieges, but the top Nexus Tower has already fallen. Inhibitor will respawn in time to save that, but I can't believe it. The blue team, all of their structures have gone down outside the base. Inner Flame will go off, but Mendrix just going to tank that one like a boss. Takes the, uh, well, the snare on himself. But, uh, well, actually, Danny the Yag is back up, and they realize they have to get out now. Inspire going to go off on Delph the Dragon, but get stand aside as I am Woodsy just going to crit him into oblivion. Mendrix picks that up with the Sunfire Cape damage. Steve the Yag and Sexy the Yag are back up as the rest of Tang and Friends will respawn, and uh, the inhibitor will stay up for now. But... 20, 15 minutes ago, if you had told me that uh, there'd be more towers alive for all, well, actually, there's the same amount of towers, and actually 3,000 gold in Tang and Friends' favor taking their first, oh, the first uh, lead of the game is just so well done. So I think Guardian Angel costs 2,200 with a chain vest, so Maka is working on getting that up. What is Sexy the Ag going for? Looks like he'll also be going for a Guardian Angel. How much money does he have? Has 400, so he's a little while off of that one. Maka working towards it himself. We already spoke about that. Iron Woodsy just doing work in these fights and has sold his Guardian Angel for another Bloodthirster, so he's gone all in. I'd really go Quicksilver Sash against the team that he's against, but uh, I guess he's feeling very confident here with uh, Sunwa just doing a brilliant job of zoning off of him. Klepto going to pick up the blue buff. Guardian Angel has about two-thirds of its cooldown remaining. Baskabab going to spawn just as the purple team go to it. But SKT1 already on top of that. There are wards for both teams here. So purple team, Tang and friends know that SKT are nearby. Delph the Dragon going to run forward and place a ward down. There is a few pinks. And it looks like uh, blue team 
Going to clear that one out. Guardian Angel is available on Mecha. Iron Woodsy is all damaged up. Can the steal happen here? Blue team need to get the engage that they need by purple team are spread right the heck out. They may go straight for the base. No, they're going to back off but force the blue team to disengage. So they're both waiting. Purple team is kind of grouped up here. No, the Tang and Friends guy is going to go straight for the base, but Karma gives more movement speed than that. Sun, we're going to step into a trap. Whirling Death goes off, does a lot of damage as the uh, well, Curse of the Sad Mummy is going to lock them up for quite a lot. Klepto jumps on I Am Woodsy, but gets taken down. Danny the Yag will fall to I Am Woodsy. Steve the Yag can't do much at all. Purple team will take down three for zero. So far, Mecha gets a double kill, and Steve the Yag will be the last kill. Casualty and Tang and Friends after a 30 minute uphill battle will crawl their way back and I think they have indeed won gay here. Oh, it's game one here. As uh, apparently Yag means gay backwards, I didn't actually realize that. But Maka and Friends, or Tang and Friends rather, going to pop the barrier on I Am Woodsy who has done fantastically on the Draven. Nexus will explode and game one going the way of Tang and Friends who up until the fifth or the fifth last minute were behind and the game with an 8,000 gold lead beautifully done by them. Now of course SKT1 John Bertold did a fantastic job as well but they couldn't capitalize on their press R combo. They just didn't get the initiation that they needed. They ignored I Am Woodsy for a little bit too long. And game one goes the way of the purple team Tang and Friends. So that was a very exciting game. We'll be getting into game one momentarily here. Uh, I believe Klingo will be uh, joining me. And hopefully he's got a better sounding voice than I, as I am quite monotone. We'll have to hand MVP to I Am Woodsy on the Draven, as uh, Draven is known for being very weak late game just because he's so susceptible. But uh, with the prote uh, fantastic protection of Sunwa, manages to stride forward and take the Gladiator victory. So we will be back in a little while, ladies and gents. Hopefully Klingo will be joining me. So stick around and we will be seeing you for Game 2.